Hello and welcome to Midtown Comics Times Square. It is Wednesday. I am Henry. It is New Comic Book Day. That is literally the greatest day of ever, well of the world of the, of the day of the world. It's the greatest day that has ever dayed. Does that make sense? No, I don't make sense. But do you know what does make sense? We've got these lovely periodicals that come out that have these engaging narratives of superheroes and supervillains and crazy nonsense all the time. And We've got a ton of people here. Very exciting week. And we've got a lot of cool books to show off for you guys. So we're going to get started right away. We're going to just go right on in to these staff picks. So first off, we've got Batman Prelude to the Wedding, Nightwing versus Hush, number one. It is a one-shot where you see a man in bandages fight a man without them. And Jade picks it as her book of the week because Jade has impeccable taste. Then we've got Becca going with the new issue of Bombshells United, issue number 19. Sadly, the final issue of Bombshells United, a wonderful swan song for the fan-favorite series. Then we've got Charles going with a brand new book, The Unexpected from the New Age of Heroes, a cool new series from Ryan Sook and Steve Orlando. Then we've got Jay going with Dr. Star and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows, a very cool book and then Seabaz is going for that brand new issue of Paper Girls because he is a big old Paper Girls fan. Now we're going to bring it down and talk about the regular books on the shelf and we start off with Dr. Star and The World of Tomorrow that I was just talking about. It's a really cool book, a side story to the main uh, Black Hammer book. If you haven't checked it out, it is definitely worthwhile and it's got Jeff Lemire and Max Fumora so you know it's going to be great. Then we have the brand new Halo series, Collateral Damage, a brand new number one from Dark Horse. And it's I like this little thing up there where it says it's a Master Chief story. You know that there have been many different Spartans in Halo lore, but Master Chief, he's kind of like the greatest guy ever. So I'm very excited to see what this new story is for him. Then we have Koishel, The Deathless, a brand new book from the pages of Hellboy. It is concluding this week with issue number six out of six. And then we've got Sword Daughter issue number one. A couple different covers here. Some really cool stuff. I really dig this small wood cover. Brian Wood and Mac Chatter telling a cool new series. Then we've got the brand new issue of Xerxes. And Xerxes, of course, has these lovely wraparound covers. Very cool stuff from Frank Miller, the man himself who created 300. That's right. He went through time to create the events of 300 and then he told their little biography. It's very cool stuff. Then we hit DC and DC's got some cool stuff. We are going to start off with that brand new Nightwing versus Hush number one one shot out of uh, Prelude to the Wedding. Very fun stuff here. Of course, Dick Grayson facing off against Hush is a battle that makes perfect sense if you know their history together. If you guys read years ago, Streets of Gotham, some really cool history between these characters. So I'm very excited to see how this plays out. Should be exciting. Then we have the brand new issue of Batman. A couple different covers here. We've got the very cool variant cover by Frank Cho, which looks very nice. Look at that intricate sketchwork, Frank Cho. Very talented, man. And then, of course, we have the main cover as well with the Joker smashing a chessboard. And he's a spoil sport, but that's because he is upset. Batman's getting married, and he wasn't invited. What's up with that? He's waiting for that invite. He's going to crash the party. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Then we've got the brand new issue of Harley Quinn. We've got another cool Frank Cho cover here. He's got a lot of stuff on the shelves this week, but we also have this main cover as well. Very cool stuff here as the targeted for death storyline goes on. Bring it on, bucko. Harley Quinn looks ready for action, and it should be a lot of fun. Then we have the brand new issue of Nightwing, issue number 45. We've got a lot of cool stuff with Nightwing this week, which makes me happy because I'm a big fan of Dick Grayson. And I'm a big fan of this book, a cool John Romita Jr. cover here. We are on the second part of a new run for Nightwing, so if you guys haven't been checking it out, I do recommend it because we now have the wonderful Ben Percy working with Chris Mooneyham for a very cool story. Now we move on. We've got that brand new issue of Bombshells United, issue number 19. This is the conclusion of the Bombshells epic, and it wraps things up in a nice little bow, bringing things together. And wouldn't you know it, they managed to even put a little thank you at the end. So some very cool stuff here, and I definitely appreciate the story of Bombshells being wrapped up nicely. Then we have the brand new issue of The Curse of Brimstone, which is a great book from Justin Jordan and Philip Tan from The New Age of Heroes. I highly recommend it. I was totally surprised. I did not expect to be enjoying this book as much as I am. 
Then we have the brand new issue of Cyborg, some very cool stuff here, and we should have a variant that I'm not... Ha ha! Found it. We've got a very cool variant cover. Cyborg's not looking too good, though. He probably doesn't like this variant cover because he is literally in the hands of another Cyborg in dire straits, you know, danger. Danger Will Robinson, except he's, you know, Victor Stone, so danger Victor Stone. Doesn't roll off the tongue the same way, you know? Now we move on, and we've got that brand new issue of Deathstroke, issue number 32, this wonderful Francesco Matina cover, and we see Batman facing off against Deathstroke the Terminator. Some very cool stuff here. Christopher Priest has been having a great time with Deathstroke these last couple years, and now we get to literally see just two of the baddest men on the planet fighting, so that's kind of amazing. Now we'll continue, and we've got the brand new issue of Green Arrow. Some cool stuff here, and a couple different covers. Really digging that Mike Grell cover. And then we also have a brand new storyline unfolding in Green Lantern's issue number 48. A couple different covers here. We have sold out of the variant cover online. So the only place you're going to find it is in store. We've got the main cover as well. And we get to see Jessica Cruz taking center stage for a very fun adventure. Then we have Exit Stage Left, the Snagglepuss Chronicles, the final issue, issue number six, as well as that brand new issue of Injustice 2, issue number 27. Very cool cover here by Tyler Kirkham, Sins of the Past. We know that Hal Jordan has done some horrible, horrible, horrible things in the Injustice universe. So it makes sense that he would end up in shackles at some point. Now we do move on. We've got one of the books that I am super excited for, and I'm going to guess that you guys are super excited for as well, the brand new series. Justice League, number one, from Scott Snyder and Jim Chung doing an amazing job. And when I say an amazing job, I know that word can get thrown around a little bit from here and there. But I'll tell you that Justice League, number one, literally sold me on panel two. It took two panels. The second panel of this book made me actually make an audible noise. And I went, ah! which is, in case you missed that, was, ah! and it is awesome. It is fun. It is cool. And if you're a DC buff, if you love the continuity of the Justice League, you're going to love this because it's really referring to a lot of stuff we haven't seen in years. Now, we are going to bring it up and we're going to talk about some of the collected editions that are out this week. And we're going to start with Michael Chabon's The Escapist Pulse Pounding Thrills from Dark Horse. And then we've got Hellboy and the BPRD 1955. Now, as we continue on, we've got Inside Mobius Part 2 as well as Jenny Finn from Mike Magnola. Some really cool stuff here. Now we continue and we've got that second hardcover edition of Batman by Tom King and David Finch and Mikhail Jenin. We've got a lot of stuff here. What does this go through? This goes through issue number 32. So we've got all of the War of Jokes and Riddles. We've got all the stuff that's been going on with the bat and the cat and their wedding and all the buildup. So this is awesome. Very cool. Then we have Dark Knight's Metal in hardcover for the first time ever. That is right. It has not been collected until today. Today is the day that you can pick up all of Metal in one spot. And I'm going to talk more about this in a minute. But just so you guys know, it's got the entire series, one through six. A lot of cool stuff. A very nice edition. And, of course, it's got that nice metal sheen. Then we have the brand new first paperback from the Gotham City Garage line, as well as Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Hard Traveling Heroes, a hardcover collection. Now, this is really cool because this is one of the most popular series of its time. It revolutionized what people thought could be told in a superhero comic, and it is still amazing and relevant today. Check it out. Neil Adams does an amazing job with Denny O'Neill and defined these characters for a completely new audience. Now, we'll bring it down, and we're going to talk about more of the books that are on the shelves this week, including that brand new issue of Shade the Changing Woman issue number four and then as we continue we've got the brand new issue of man of steel brian michael bendis completely wowed all of the naysayers last issue if you guys weren't checking this book out already check it out because it's crazy brian michael bendis is bringing his a game and he's gonna have a lot of fun taking over the superman mythos then we have the brand new issue of the unexpected and when i say brand new i mean it's the newest thing on this shelf because i have literally never seen this before it is a new series from the new age of heroes how many times can i say the word new i knew it there was a limit it is great it is a lot of fun we've got some cool stuff going on here steve orlando carrie nord and ryan sook doing a great job then we're going to continue on we've got wonder woman annual number two and what i automatically love about this is that is literally star sapphire wonder woman and i have not seen star sapphire wonder woman in probably like what eight years that was when blackest night was like eight nine years ago so super cool to be seeing some fun follow-up to that then we continue and we've got some cool indie books we're starting off with some idw titles and we've got the second issue of demigod and then the third issue of ghostbusters crossing over 
a couple different covers here looking very cool very spectral maybe uh got a bit of an infection there and an incentive as well some great stuff going on here if you haven't been checking out ghostbusters crossing over it is a lot of fun then we've got stowaway to the stars from john byrne very cool john byrne the legendary creator and then we have the brand new issue of teenage mutant ninja turtles issue number 83 a couple different covers here things are looking like uh well, it looks like we got a new toy out of this. It looks like they're in uh, some Arctic warfare uh, fatigues. And this is very cool, very fun. And I just, I love the turtles. So I'm always happy when I see that on the shelf. Then we've got a double dose of Rick Remender because we've got that brand new issue of Black Science as well as a second issue of Death or Glory, which totally stunned me, totally wowed me. I really enjoyed it. Some very cool stuff here. We've got this nice Virgin variant as well as the uh, Julian Totino Tedesco variant. Very cool stuff here. Bengal doing a great job on the interior art. I'm gonna talk more about this book in a little bit. Then we're gonna continue on and we've got that brand new issue of Eternal Empire as well as the Grave Diggers Union. Some cool stuff, issue number seven. And then we have the brand new issue of Isola, a couple different covers here. So whether you want the label to be in the middle, you want the label to be on the top, I know you guys want this book because it is fantastic. It is very cool. Brennan Fletcher, Carl Kershaw doing a great job creating a very fun story in the you know, same vein as like a Studio uh, Ghibli movie, which I think is really fun. Then we've got that brand new issue of Moonstruck, issue number six, as well as Paper Girls, which we know Seabaz likes, and in case Seabaz's recommendation isn't enough, I'll tell you that I recommend the book as well because Paper Girls is fantastic. It is one of my favorite books from Image. I always dig it. Then we have the brand new issue of Stalker Prism, issue number four, as well as the brand new issue, issue number 10. I can't believe we're already to issue number 10 of Scales and Scoundrels, a very fun fantasy series. Then we've got a couple cool things from Spawn. We've got Spawn and Witchblade, Medieval Spawn to be specific, a very cool book, issue number two at 32 pages. It packs a wallop. And then we have Spawn number 286, and Spawn issue number 286 has one of my favorite gimmicks that I have ever seen, literally ever, because we've got the regular cover, which is actually cover number two, We've got cover number one, and we've got all of these right here, which I'll just flip through a couple of them. And you'll see that as I go through each edition of the book, we've got different colors, and that is because these are colorist appreciation variants, which I think are great. They really go to highlight the different textures and worlds that a colorist can bring to a book. Colorists, I think, are the unsung heroes of the comic book industry. Tell me you don't see a drastic difference between the black and white version and the colored versions. Very cool stuff here, and I definitely recommend you guys coming by and picking up some of those variants. Now, we are going to bring it up, and we're going to talk about some of the collections that are out over here. And we've got the brand new Volume 5 of Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Some cool stuff in Twilight of the Guardians. And then we've got Legion by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. And this is super cool because this has uh, Legion Lost, which is one of like the coolest Legion superheroes things. And this book is awesome. They, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning have obviously worked on a number of different titles together over the years. And this is where they got their start with one of their most acclaimed runs. And Olivia Coipel does the art on it, so you know it's pretty. And then we move on and we've got Live Fast, Thwart Hard. We've got Fab Four Mania. Oh, that's fun. We've got Feast of Fields. We've got the Epic of Gilgamesh. Some classic literature for you guys. Then we've got Girl Genius, the comic book story of baseball with the heroes, the hustlers, and history-making swings and misses of America's national pastime. Then we have a book, very meta, strong female protagonist, which is my favorite title of the week in case anybody was wondering as well as the brand new volume of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, volume 19 of the current series. Then we continue on, and we've got Optimus Prime. Of course, Transformers have everybody a buzz this week with that new Bumblebee trailer, so check out some of the Transformers comics. They're very cool. Then we also have Prison Pit, and that looks vile uh, in the best way. It looks cool, you know? Uh, then we've got Quarry's War, which is from the Hard Case Crime books from Titan. We've got... Solar Flare Season 2, we've got Spectacle Book 1, we've got the Vietnam Journal, then we've got Black Road, the bot, the, what is this, the Holy North was the way that they branded this one. They've done a couple different editions of the Black Road, and this is very cool, very nice hardcover. 
We also have number one with a bullet in trade paperback for the first time, as well as The Red Hook, Volume 1, New Brooklyn from Dean Haspiel. And, of course, if you guys missed out on it last week, we still have copies of Where We Live, A Benefit for the Survivors in Las Vegas, as topical now as it will ever be. It is a great and very hard-hitting read. Uh, you guys can check out, we did a video last week where we talked about Where We Live. I do recommend checking it out. Now, we're going to bring it back down. And we're going to talk about the brand new issue of Walking Dead, New World Order, issue number six of six. But, you know, if you go with the actual series number, it's 180. We've got this absolutely terrifying cover of Alpha. And, uh, you know, the pages inside are equally terrifying. Then we have a wealth of wonderful books for Ant-Man and the Wasp. So first off, we've got True Believers, The Birth of Giant Man. Some classic stories because, of course, you know, he was an ant before he was a giant. Uh, so this is telling that tale. Then we've got the blank edition and the regular edition of Ant-Man and the Wasp, a brand new series from Mark Wade and Javier Garone. I am super all about this book. I'm super excited, and clearly you guys are too because we've sold out of every single version of this book on our website, so the only way you guys are finding it is if you come into the store. We've got a bunch in the store, but you guys better ask fast because it's already gone online. Then we've got the brand new book, a one-shot Ant-Man and the Wasp, Living Legends, some cool stuff from Ralph Macho and Andrea Davidi. And then we've got a reprinted edition of Avengers number one with, of course, the big three of the Marvel Universe, Cap, Thor, and Tony. Now, as we continue on, we've got Rise of the Black Panther, issue number six, the conclusion of the storyline, as well as Captain America number 703. And we've got a couple different covers here. We've got the Julian Totino Tedesco cover, as well as the Michael Cho. And I've got to tell you, they put two of my favorite cover artists in the game on the same book, so that makes me super happy. And this book also makes me super happy because Mark Wade and Leomar Leonardo Romero are doing a great job, and they've got some cool contributors to this issue. Check out Captain America if you aren't already. Now, as we continue on, we have Deadpool number one. That is right. Deadpool is back. You guys didn't even know he was gone, but I'll tell you that this book is going to knock your socks off. It is crazy. It is wild, and that's because Scotty Young is telling the tale now. You can see, obviously, he's got this... Uh, this cute little Scotty Young variant that he likes to do. And it's a very fun series. I do recommend checking out. Then we also have the brand new issue of Doctor Strange. Mark Wade is all over the place this week. Very cool stuff here. Uh, Mark Wade and Jesus size take Doctor Strange and they launch him into space. And that is awesome. That is, that is really cool because how do you control the cosmos from the cosmos itself? You know, he's this big old fancy magician. What's he going to do? when he doesn't have the Sanctum Santorum to keep him safe. Now we're going to go on up and we're going to talk about some of the collected editions that are out this week. And we're going to start off with the Ant-Man and Wasp Prelude. So this does build into the uh, movie that is about to come out. We also have Ant-Man Astonishing Origins from Tom DeFalco. This is uh, Ant-Man Season 1 from a few years back, but it's a nice, you know, slap some new paint on it. And you got a new edition and it's very cool. Uh, if you guys haven't learned about Ant-Man before, that's a good opportunity to learn about Hank Pym and his fantastical Pym particles. Uh, Bill Foster and Egghead are in there, too. It's fun. Then we've got Captain America, Home of the Brave. More Mark Wade. My man is everywhere this week. Some really cool stuff. Mark Wade and Chris Hamney, one of the most critically acclaimed teams of the modern era with Matt Wilson on colors. The book is amazing. Check it out. Then we've got Deadpool in hardcover. We've got this is all the Secret Empire stuff, obviously in World's Greatest Hardcover Volume 4. And then we also have the second trade paperback edition of Black Bolt, so that concludes that series. Then we've got the official guide to Solo. So if you guys checked out Solo, Solo was very fun, very cool. You can learn more about it. And then we've got the movie-making magic of the creatures and aliens in Star Wars. So this is really cool, behind-the-scenes stuff. And then we're going to continue on. We've got Tales of Suspense. The whole thing, all the suspense, has been ripped out and put into one book, so it's very cool. Then we have... Uh, so we've got the Runaways Omnibus Edition, and this is cool and super big, and it's got a ton of comics, which makes me very happy. Winner of Eisner and Harvey Awards. There's so many awards that they can't even list them all on here. And what do we got here? We've got the first... Oh, wow. There's a lot. We've got the first 18 issues of the original Runaways book. Then we've got the first... We've got the 24 issues of the second Runaways book. So already that's like 42 different comics in here. Then we've got the free comic book day. So there are 43 books in here in one spot. That is amazing. All the runs, all the books from Brian K. Vaughan and Adrian Alfano. So if you want to check out Runaways and know what that's all about, right there, all of it, one spot. 
Now, we are going to bring it back down, and we're going to talk about another book that is very exciting for this week, Immortal Hulk issue number one. That is right. Bruce Banner is back, and he is very angry and very much immortal. He cannot die. He keeps going through all these crazy trials and tribulations, and horrible things happen to him, and he somehow walks up, and he's okay. And we've got a very cool special edition from Hulk artist, Dale Keown, who of course has contributed wonderful stories to him in his wonderful backlog. We're going to talk more about this book in a minute, but I, I really love this book. This was awesome. Then we've got the brand new issue of Infinity Countdown, issue number four. A couple different covers here. Some really cool stuff. If you've been checking out the Infinity Countdown storyline, you know that it's building up to the new Infinity Wars, and it's going to be crazy. And I also like that they put the Ultron Hank Pym thing on there, because I think he's neato. Then we have the brand new issue of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, a very special issue talking about smoking. Uh, Amy Rita jumping in to do some of the writing here with Brandon Montclair. Then we also have the brand new issue of Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, featuring the best Spider-Man villain of them all. That's right, Mysterio, my personal favorite Spider-Man villain, tied up there with Electro. And he's awesome, and I'm very excited to see what he does in this book. Then we've got the brand new issue of Star Wars, The Last Jedi, issue number three. Some cool stuff going on here, adapting the hit film. And then we also have the regular issue of Star Wars, issue number 49. We've got this very, we've got the worst character in all of Star Wars, the ugliest, wrinkliest, horriblest man on the planet, Emperor Palpatine, in that cover. Uh, I hate him, he's a doo-doo head. Then we've got uh, the very cool Royal Guard cover, though, and he's cool. So why can't I want this guy? I don't want, I, forget that guy. Royal Guard is one of the coolest designs in Star Wars, man. But it's a brand new book. It's brand new and awesome, very cool, and we're only one issue away from issue 50. Then we have the reprinted edition of the Thanos Annual, which, of course, flew off the shelves. Some very cool stuff here. And then we have the brand new reprinted edition. That's right, the brand new reprint of Hunt for Wolverine, issue number one. It is the one shot that launched all these cool new books. Then we have Hunt for Wolverine, Weapon Lost, issue number two, a very cool story from Charles Sewell, focusing on the detectives of the Marvel Universe as they hunt down uh, Wolverine, but he's probably really good at hiding. Uh, then as we continue, we've got the brand new, I'm sorry, we've got the reprinted edition of Old Man Hawkeye, issue number four, as well as the brand new issue of Weapon X with Sickle, on the cover. That is right, Omega Red has somehow found the most convoluted organization to join Sickle. Tell me what that acronym is for. I don't know. Uh, but I really dig this cover, and as many people have pointed out, Sabretooth looks just like Triple H there, and that makes me extra happy. Uh, then we've got the one-shot uh, Dazzler X song. So this is really cool if you are a Dazzler fan. Maglid Visaggio doing a cool story here. We've got some great covers as well. A very cool book. Then as we continue, we've got the brand new issue of Astonishing X-Men, issue number 12, Charles Sewell, Man Called X. It, it concludes, it is the conclusion of the story. Some cool stuff been going on in this book. Then we also have the brand new issue of X-Men Gold, as well as X-Men Red. And we've got um, a really wonderful cover here by Travis Dress that I really dig. And there, we might have sold out. But there was a headshot variant as well that was super cool, and I super dig, and I've been super digging. Excellent. And I get to talk to you guys about some of my favorite books from the week. Thank you guys for checking out all the stuff on the wall. And now I'm going to give a special spotlight to some added goodies. So first off, we've got that brand new issue of Batman, issue number 48. And it's got the Joker, and I hate the Joker, but I'll be honest with you. I like when the Joker pops up because that means that Batman's inevitably going to punch him in the face. So I'm very excited to see the wonderful ways in which uh, Joker torments the Caped Crusader and his beloved Catwoman as we build up to uh, the wedding. And I just want to show you this wonderful page. Um, Mikkel Jenna does a great job doing the landscapes of Gotham. Gotham City is one of the most... Uh, architecturally designed cities in comics so it's really cool to see that actually highlighted in the book then we've got the brand new issue of green lanterns and this is very fun because aaron Giuseppe jumps on to write it this issue and he tells a fun little tale it's going to be a little two-parter uh focusing on jessica cruz some cool stuff here and some crazy awesome art as well fun book jessica cruz is amazing and I'm really happy whenever she gets that. I mean, she always gets highlighted in Green Lanterns. That's kind of the number one place to find her. But I like that extra little oomph, that extra little spotlight, you know? 
Then we've got the Jim Lee variant to Justice League number one. And look, I want to gush to you guys about this book. I really want to tell you all the different reasons I love this book. I want to tell you what it does for the mythos of the DC universe. But I feel like if I tell you too much, you guys are going to get kind of mad at me. Like, literally, this book was sold to me on panel number two. But maybe you guys don't know what happens in panel number two yet. So I'm not going to show you panel number two. I'm going to instead show you page two. Uh, because we get this nice double page spread that immediately establishes for everybody watching at home the Hall of Justice is back. And it represents a tonal shift as Scott Snyder and Jim Chung bring the Justice League back to basics. But at the same time, create this new cosmos threatening event in the background. We get a lot of cool stuff going on here. And I also want to show off this lovely double page spread because we've got some great stuff here. And what I really like is that Scott nails the voices of these characters and actually has them enjoying what they're doing. Like, not everybody's Batman. Not everybody's tormented. Flash is kind of okay with running around and having fun out there. And I think that's refreshing. And it's really cool to see heroes that are actually somewhat enjoying themselves. And, oh, did I mention Martian Manhunter is running the ship? And that is amazing. I love seeing Martian Manhunter back in the pages of Justice League proper. This is literally the cartoon lineup plus two. So that's pretty fantastic. And this book has made me very happy. I am very excited for more. Then we have the brand new issue of Nightwing. Issue number 45. Uh, I really was like super impressed by last issue. I had a lot of fun uh, with issue number 44 of Nightwing. Because we get to see... Um, kind of dick grayson's a little antiquated in some ways maybe he isn't you know he's not oracle he's not like up there with like the technical specs and the readouts and the plans for the future so i really appreciate seeing that highlighted as we see him almost feel like a caveman compared to modern technology really great stuff here ben percy does a great job and chris mooneyham's art is really cool really does a great job of establishing a uh, tone for the series and this is the page I'm showing you because I don't want to spoil things for you because if you didn't read last issue, you should pick up last issue. And if you didn't read last issue and you want to start with this issue, well, that's, that's cool too. But it's great and you should enjoy it. Then we have a brand new series and a brand new team in The Unexpected. Steve Orlando, Ryan Sook, and Carrie Nord do a great job of establishing a new team of heroes. But they're kind of unconventional. They're different and they're a little bit unexpected. Hey. But I really appreciate that they're doing this because I've really enjoyed all the New Age of Heroes books. I think they've been really cool. Oh, and what am I doing? It's a New Age of Heroes book, and it's New Age of Heroes number one. So that means this is the last time I get to do this. We get this wonderful, nice spread, and I'll flip it around. And you guys can see this as well. I think that's cool. That's how you do a gimmick, right? Hey, it folded magically. Very cool. Very cool book, worth checking out, and it's only $3. I mean, you got $3 in your pocket, right? Don't buy the soda. Buy the comic. It's better for you. Then we hit some cool indie books. We've got that second issue of Death or Glory. Now, the first issue totally made me super happy because it was just really cool, really did a great job. Bengal really impressed with some great layouts and some interesting spreads. Um, let me see if I can show you anything. I have not flipped through this issue yet, so I totally don't know if this is going to be horrible. Yep, that's Wow, that's horribly inappropriate. I can't see, show you that. Um, maybe don't give this to the kids. But nonetheless, check out the book. It is a lot of fun. Rick Remender doing a great job. Rick Remender, of course, have done so many fantastic books over the last couple of years, and it's really great to see him working intimately with an artist like Bengal, who clearly has a great grasp on the story that they are telling. I highly recommend checking it out. Then we've got that brand new issue of his So Love, very fun book. If you like talking cats, it's got... Well, it's not a talking cat. It's more of like a giant, colorful cat, and he's really pretty, and it's really cool, and I do really enjoy the series. I've enjoyed the last two issues. Brenna Fletcher and Carl Crushfield have done a great job with creating a vivid world, and I literally was watching Studio Ghibli movies over the weekend, so when they say this is like that, this really is. It's really fun. It's really cool, and we've also just got a cool fantasy narrative that I think uh, a lot of fans will enjoy. There's, there's the kitty. I, I love kitties, and they make me happy. Then a book that makes me happy for completely different reasons is Go Go Power Rangers. Now, I have recently decided that I'm going to rewatch all of Power Rangers because I clearly 
uh, have far too much time on my hands. So I've been rewatching a lot of the original episodes of the series, and I got to tell you that I love what they're doing with the Go Go Power Rangers books because it's a playful homage to those original tales. And if you guys go back and watch some of them, it's very different than you remember. <laughs> But it is fun nonetheless, and I love what they're doing with the book because they have created a really compelling story with a Shattered Grid crossover. It's been crazy. Dan Mora on art here does a great job, and I don't want to show you too much because uh, Shattered Grid, a lot of what makes the story work is the shock value of it. But I will show you this nice little art here. Dan Mora does a great job showing the ranges, showing the craziness, and uh, I really am excited to see where this goes. Also... This is totally up there for, like, cool Zord design I have seen in years. This thing is awesome looking. I am super all about this. Then we've got the brand new issue of Red, Sonya, and Tarzan. That's right. I did say that. Red, Sonya, and Tarzan. It's two of those classic characters that run around. They could probably use a couple more layers of clothes. That's why they hang out in the jungle because in the jungle it's really hot. So it makes sense. Uh, and this book has been really fun, and Gail Simone has done a great job of bringing these two characters together for a fun story. Walter Giovanni, who of course did some previous art, let me just show you literally page one. Some art on Red Sony a few years back, doing a great job on this. I think it's really fun, I think it's really cool, and I think it's great if you're a fan of either one of the characters. Check out what happens when the two of them meet. And then a very fun, very whimsical book. We've got Valiant High, issue number two. Daniel Kibblesmith and Derek Charm doing a great job of reimagining the heroes of the Valiant universe as high schoolers. And I think it's great. I love XL Manowar in a football uniform because I think that is really fun and clever. And I think that the book has been great. Really cool. If you guys checked out last issue, if you guys want to go back and check out our video from last week, we talked to Joe Illage, uh, executive editor from Valiant, who was telling us about this book and why it's super cool. And I have to agree. I think this book is a lot of fun. Really great. And uh, also, Exo Man of War is dabbing on the cover, and that's hilarious. Uh, then we're going to hit some cool stuff from Marvel, and we're going to start off with Ant-Man and the Wasp. And Ant-Man and the Wasp has been very cool, very fun. It's got Mark Wade and Javier Garon, and I love Javier Garon's art. I own original art from Javier Garon. I had him do a commission for me. So I'm super happy to be watching uh, the story unfold in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it's great because it does sum up the characters in the beginning of the book, so if you aren't familiar with them for whatever reason, maybe you guys missed out on one of the funniest movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you guys should check this out. Um, let me show you non-spoiler pages. Non-spoiler page! Cool stuff, awesome story, Scott Lang and Nadia Van Dyne doing a great job, are really just enjoying this book, and I think it's cool and it's off to a great start. Then another book that is starting over this week, we've got Deadpool issue number one, and we've got, come on, Scotty Young doing Deadpool. He literally has a letter column at the end of the book where he talks about how he has wanted this book for like the last six years, and there was always one book or another book or all these crazy things got in the way, and now he is here, he is on Deadpool, and it's going to be crazy because if you guys have read I Hate Fairyland, you know that this guy is kind of warped uh, in the best way possible, and I think that it is appropriate for... Deadpool, let me see if there's anything I can show you that is appropriate. Probably not. Oh, that's wildly inappropriate. Oh, man, that page is so good. I can't show you that at all. And there's, like, kids in the store, so I really can't show you this page. But I'll tell you, it's funny. So check it out. I really can't show you. I really want to. I'm sorry. Then we have the brand new issue of Doctor Strange. I really liked what Donny Cates has been doing with the book. And now I'm really excited to see where Mark Wade takes the world that Donny has been playing with and Jason Aaron before him and Dennis Hopeless and all these great writers and now Mark Wade is going to take Doctor Strange and launch him into space. That's weird. Uh, and that's appropriate because Doctor Strange should always be challenging the unknown, always be doing these crazy things that we don't expect. And Jesus Size is a wonderful artist. I'm super excited to see what he brings. And when you open up the book and you open up to art like this, you're just going to be happy. And I'm very excited to see where the story goes from here. Then we have the Midtown Comics exclusive Immortal Hulk number one ah, from Dale Keown. Some awesome art on this cover here. I actually really dig it. He's literally climbing a building with a little, well, I'm assuming, you know, it's Bruce in his hand. He's tormenting himself. He is his own worst enemy as this book goes to show. And look, I'm trying not to do too much spoilers here. Al Ewing and Joe Bennett do a great job on this book, but I really enjoyed it, really had a lot of fun. And there's just one double-page spread. Okay, there's two double-page spreads, but I'm going to show you one of them. Boom! Amazing, super cool, super powerful, impactful. It's like a 
punch to the gut, and when the Hulk punches you in the gut, you get hurt. Did you ever see the movie? You remember when he kicked that guy? He Sparta kicked him, and then like he nearly died. It's like that. This is like killing me. Uh, but really, the wait for issue two is going to kill me even worse. Then we've got that brand new issue of Infinity Countdown, issue number four. Some fun stuff. Jerry Dugan's been doing a great job creating this wonderful, crazy uh, conflict with all the Infinity Gems, and I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. I've been really digging a lot of these covers, and I like seeing Hank Pym Ultron, even though he makes me very conflicted and upset. Uh, this book is great. Then a couple collected editions I want to show for you guys real quick is we've got Dark Knight's Battle. We've got the entire completed book all in one spot. That's right, all of Dark Knight's Battle, and watch this. Wait, you have to uh, stay, stay with me now. Stay with me. There we go. Uh, we've got a very cool slipcase, but I really love this because it's got some great contrast. So you can see that nice metallic sheen on metal. This book is great. It's super awesome. And if you guys are checking out the new Justice League book, I do recommend checking this out because it does set up some of what they're doing in there. Then we've got the brand new Lumberjanes to the Max edition. This nice hardcover. Lumberjanes makes some of the prettiest hardcovers in comics. Boom Studios does a great job with the book. It's fun. It's whimsical. It's great. And it is a fun read for the summer. And then one last book i got to talk about. We've got Captain America, Home of the Brave. Mark Wade, Chris Samney, Matt Wilson making comics amazing i really enjoy this series i think it's great it's one of my favorite captain america runs that we've had in recent memory and i think it's cool because it's a breath of fresh air when you uh contrast it with some of the dark hysteria that we've seen in these last couple years of captain america this is really fun and whimsical and i think it's very cool and that's it that's it there's still more comics on the wall but if i keep talking i'm gonna run out of saliva it is very exciting thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you soon like this video, be sure to let us know by commenting in the section below me and telling us. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel, find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram, find us on Twitter, find me. If you can find me, you get a cookie. I will find you back and I will give you a cookie. What kind of cookie do you like? I like oatmeal raisin cookies. Some people, macadamia cookies are really good too if they've got the white chocolate in it. Maybe chocolate chip, uh, not double chocolate. That's a little bit much for me. But you guys tell me what cookies you want and uh, we'll talk soon.